I've seen quite a few videos about this monopod on YouTube, and pretty much every video that I saw had nothing but positive things to say about it. But they did mostly mention the same things. So rather than document everything that I like about this monopod, I spent the last couple weeks trying to find something wrong with it. Let's get undone. What's happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and I am the Eggman. Goo 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 goo. So I was wandering around NAB last month when I came upon the iFootage booth, which had a whole forest of these monopods sitting there, and then I remembered, oh yeah, those are those monopods that everybody thinks are the greatest of all time. So I was like, give me one of those, and I snatched it up, and I ran home to Canada. Now I've used monopods a lot. My wife and I ran a sports photography business, and we used monopods daily to keep us limber while supporting the weight of our giant lenses. And so I feel like I know everything about a monopod that annoys me. And as a video shooter, I also know what I like about tripods and about shooting handheld. So I immediately started beating the hell out of this thing to see where its faults are. So firstly, I'm pretty tall, often too tall to use a regular monopod without hunching over. So I got iFootage to give me the tallest one that they had, which is, this is the C180, the Cobra 2 C180, which is 180 centimeters, that's what the 180 stands for, which is about 5 foot 11 inches. Now I'm 6 foot 4 inches, which is about 193 centimeters, so I didn't think that this was going to cut it. But I think that they do the measurement not including these feet that you can also attach on the bottom, uh, but instead maybe do it with just the length of the monopod, because when I brought this thing up with the feet, attached, it came all the way up to my eye level without even a camera on. And if you put a head on it, like the Komodo K5 fluid head that iFootage makes, it should be tall enough for even someone approaching 7 feet. So nothing wrong with it so far. Now two other things that I hate about monopods is the twisting locks and also the clamp locks that require you to tighten them so much and put so much force on them to stop the monopod from sinking. Because anything less than that and if you put a heavy camera and lens on it, they just tend to slide down over time. But the Cobra 2 uses very robust buckles that are easy to open and close and even when loosened, using the included tool, are surprisingly surprisingly resilient. I put as much force as I possibly could to try and get them to sink and they wouldn't budge. Another thing that I dislike about monopods is that terrible clanking sound that the extensions make if you deploy them without controlling their descent, like this. And it's even worse sometimes if you do it upside down. Well the Cobra 2 seems to funnel the air in a way and when combined with the o-rings that are between each segment makes for a much smoother and quieter collapse. And while we've got this here, another thing that annoys me about monopods is how chewed up the rubber ball on the end there can get, and sometimes it even gets sheared off and stuffed inside the tube. Well, on the Cobra 2, it's a solid piece with a 3 8 inch thread on it, so you can actually unscrew it, move it, and potentially replace it if necessary. And this brings me to a weird complaint I have about monopods, which probably isn't that relevant for a lot of people, but if you've ever tried to use them as a boom pole or to extend another device somewhere, you always have to mount that to the head because you don't usually have the option on the bottom because, like I said, this is usually a fixed piece, which then requires you to have the heaviest and thickest part of the monopod deployed away from you while you try to hold it by the foot. And that doesn't really make a lot of sense when it comes to distribution of weight. Well, because the fact that this is a 3 8 inch socket on the bottom of this monopod, you can actually attach a device to that end, and I suppose this end too if you wanted to put a monitor or something on this side, but then you can actually put the business end in the right direction and use this more effectively as a boom pull. And that little inclusion makes this monopod exponentially more useful. So at this point I started getting pretty desperate for things to dislike about it. I thought, well, you're likely to lose this rubber foot if you take it off. But then I realized that you can attach it to the bottom of these little feet here, which also has a 3 8 inch hole on the bottom. So you're probably never going to lose it. And then I thought, well maybe because the ball head is on the bottom here, it's going to require me to bend over in a weird way, which will cause problems with my height and everything like I was saying, in order to make adjustments to the ball head. But no, you can actually make the adjustments quite easily and accurately with just your foot. And having it on the bottom like this allows you to make smooth leaning shots. And these little legs have multiple levels of locking adjustment and are surprisingly strong for their size. So at this point I figured the only issue would probably be the price. I heard a lot of those other reviewers say that it was just over $200 and I thought, well, that is a lot to pay for a monopod. But then I looked up a current price on B&H and it's only $150, which is actually $80 less than the Manfrotto equivalent. And those prices are for the carbon fiber version, which is actually only 1.35 kilos or around 3 pounds with the feet attached and only about half that at about 670 grams or 1.5 pounds without the feet. But the value calculation wouldn't be complete if I didn't mention just how freaking useful this little mini tripod is. It absolutely destroys the Jobies in terms of reliability, and it can hold 10 kilos or 22 pounds, so you can actually put a cine rig on here. In fact, I've actually been using it more than the monopod. I have it holding B cams, lights, microphones, whatever. It's super handy, and I'd happily pay double the price of the Manfrotto Pixie just for this. And this little tripod actually righted another complaint that I might have potentially had about the monopod, which was that you can't take long exposure shots 
shots with the monopod because it's just a bit too wobbly. You'd have to use a cable release, and even then, like even if you set like a 10 second self timer, it still wobbles a bit too much in my opinion for a long exposure. Now most of you are probably thinking, why the hell would you use a monopod for a long exposure in the first place? And I get it, I was reaching here to try and find something wrong with it, but it didn't even work because the kit does provide a solution for long exposures. If you use just this little tripod, you can do long exposures even on uneven or rocky terrain and it's surprisingly stable and you don't even need to set a self timer and you can do a pretty good job. So I can't even really take points off for long exposures with this kit because it does provide a workaround. But it was in this dual purpose testing that I did find kind of a flaw, albeit that I am a bit reaching here. So you can't actually use both the monopod and the tripod separately at the same time. So because there's only one quick release plate included in the kit, and you need the quick release plate in order to attach anything to the monopod or to the tripod, you can't actually use the devices at the same time separately. It's kind of hard to fault a company for selling a product that they intended to be used as a single device for not allowing you to use it as two separate devices, but it would be outstanding if they put two in the kit, or even if they just made the quick release plate available for sale on their store and you could just buy it as an add-on when purchasing the monopod, I think that would be a great solution too. But the kit is quite complete as it is, and it even comes with a really nice padded bag, which can be extended if you want to keep the head on it. You can just like unvelcro that part. It's great, it's nice, and overall I would say that this package is worth well over $150. Now the Komodo K5 fluid head is also $150, but I wasn't as excited about it. There's nothing really wrong with it. Again, I like the design, I like the way that it looks, but at $150 the price is only fair and appropriate, and it's about on par with what you would expect to get from the competition. It uses Manfrotto plates, which makes life easy, but there was one issue that I had, which is that the position of the rosette next to the quick release button for the plate actually conflict with one another, and so if you use your handle on an angle lower than 45 degrees, like say about here, you'll notice that it actually starts to scrape against the button, and it can actually make it impossible at times to push the button all the way in without adjusting the handle position first, and my button is now pretty scored up from this issue. But it's pretty minor and probably won't affect a lot of users, so I would say that if you can find them in a combo at a reduced price, I would definitely go for it. But even at full price, I do like the fact that it matches the Cobra aesthetically because I really like the look of the Cobra. I like the red metallic touches and the pattern on the carbon fiber is awesome as well. And the grip is nice and does reasonably well to resist getting cold. iFootage really nailed it with this one. I tried as hard as I could to find something to legitimately complain about and I just couldn't. It's terrific. Our search for the perfect camera may be far from over, but at least in the meantime, we have the perfect monopod. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful, or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. Alright. I'm done. <laughs>